Hey girlfriends, I'm Bianca Renee and you're watching Bianca Renee Today and today I'm here to say that I do not follow the curly girl method. Oh my goodness, sound the alarm, Bianca Renee, I repeat, Bianca Renee does not follow the curly girl method. <laughs> Please, tell my subscribers that I love them. It's true. So some of you right now are freaking out, but the other half of you are like, what's the curly girl method? Well, the CG or curly girl method was created to help curly people understand the best way to take care of their curly hair. It was actually invented by Lorianne Massey, who also is the author of this very popular curly girl book called the Curly Girl Handbook, which really breaks down everything there is to know about the Curly Girl Method. Not only did Lorianne Massey write this book, create the whole CG method, she also is the co-founder of the Diva Sean Salon, so all the Diva Curl Curly Hair Salons, and the Diva Curl Products. So basically, she's like the godmother of curls. Now, as much as I know about curls, and as much as I've learned on my own, from my own research, from YouTube, from hairstylists, I know a lot about curls. But I actually had never read the Curly Girl book. So I decided to order this on Amazon so I could be a little bit more educated and really understand everything that there is to know. So I did learn, you know, a couple things, but I was also very surprised on how well educated I already was in curly hair. There was some stuff in here that was like, girl, I've been doing this, and I didn't even know it was part of the rules. Now what might come as a surprise for you guys is, I rarely, if not ever, say this product is curly girl method approved. I might have said CG friendly in like one video, but I purposely don't use that term because I'd never read the book. So I didn't want to just throw out a title that I didn't fully understand. I always say these products are Bianca Renee approved. Well, what Bianca Renee approved means is I, Bianca Renee, approve them. That means that I tried them, like them, would recommend them, and they're sulfate, paraben, and silicone free. But the real curly girl method goes beyond just sulfate, parabens, and silicones. There's other ingredients that they suggest that you should avoid. So I wanted to make this video to make myself very clear that I personally have always and just look for the three ingredients. I don't like to use sulfate because it'll dry out your hair. That's just a known thing. I don't use parabens because now they're saying that that can cause cancer and it's just really unnecessary. And silicone, silicone is something that can cause buildup on your scalp and it's not going to help you get any moisture because it's creating a plastic coating over your hair. But let's break down the curly girl method. All right. <sighs> Rule number one in the curly girl method. The first thing it mentions is that you should not be putting any heat on your hair. That means you should not be straightening your hair with a blow dryer or flat iron because it's just flat out wrong. Okay, you're damaging your curls. I could agree with that. It also states that you should not be using anything to detangle your hair besides your little fingers. I, funny enough, do only detangle with my hands. I always love finger detangling. I think it's a more gentle way to detangle your curls and I have no problem with just my fingers, especially when I have a conditioner that has good slip. So if you are using a Denman brush, a tangle teaser, or even a wide tooth comb, you are breaking the curly girl method rules. How dare you? Off with her head. Next page. Cleansing. You should not be using any shampoos, period. It straight up says that you need to just throw away any shampoos that you have. And they consider shampoos anything with sulfate in it. I've always been iffy about this thing because if something doesn't have sulfate, I think it could still be called a shampoo because it's cleansing my hair. For example, the Diva Curl No Poo, they don't consider that a shampoo. It's technically to some people a co-wash. I've never called it a co-wash, nor do I think it's anything but a sulfate-free shampoo. But that's just the deal. Moving on to the conditioner. 
Your conditioner should not contain any silicone, waxes, alcohol, parabens, phthalates, also known as phthalates, if you pronounce it correctly. Also avoid products that say that they are styling creams or waxes. This is when things get interesting. Exhibit A, the Diva Curl Styling Cream literally right there on the front page but it's saying not to use products that are called styling creams like why why is that a problem these will make your hair crispy like ramen noodles not a good look um this styling cream is bomb it makes your hair super moisturized not crunchy at all this doesn't even have any hold so i don't know why she would be mad about the name when diva curl your brand literally has a styling cream but you know I digress. So now let's talk about alcohol. Hey, I thought you would never ask. <laughs> no, not that type of alcohol. Oh, oh yeah, of course, of course. Alcohol in our styling products. Curls should be seen and not heard. Certain alcohol like cetyl alcohol, C-E-T-Y-L, are okay if they're in a cleanser, but those used in gels can be extremely drying for the hair because it can cause frizz. Or if the gel contains alcohol, it will spend those days sucking up your strands, moisture, and will prevent new hydration from getting in. So I was really hoping that somewhere in this, you know, 188 page book, there'd be like a straight up list of all the ingredients for us to just reference, but there's not. Like that's literally why I bought this book. So then I just had to go to good old Google and I found the list on there. So then I was like, I paid for this book, why? And nine out of 10 articles online will probably say that alcohol is drying for your hair. But there are different types of alcohols where in fact, some are beneficial to your hair because they have great hydrating, moisturizing and smoothing properties. So depending on the complex <clears throat> molecular structure of different alcohols involves different carbon chains attached by the alcohol groups. Wow, this is getting sciency. So basically don't use any products that have alcohols that include these alcohols. These are considered the bad alcohols that can dry out your hair. So go ahead and screenshot this so you can always have it as a reference when you go shopping. Wait, 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 wait till I get cute, hold on. And then these are the good alcohols that won't harm your hair. I really hope you screenshot that at the right time because if I look crazy and I see you post this. Now it's very possible that I have some products in my collection that may contain some of the bad alcohols. I just didn't know about it, wasn't really checking for it, nor did I notice any extreme drying from them. If it did make my hair extremely dry, I wouldn't have recommended it to you. But if you have extremely dry hair or damaged hair and you really want to be careful about things that make your hair dry, or maybe you live somewhere like that's in a really dry climate, maybe try avoiding products that have these alcohols and see if you see a difference. The next ingredient that I really didn't know much about, nor did I know I should be avoiding, was waxes. So I was ready to read a whole page or chapter on waxes and it was not in here. It literally just has one sentence saying don't use waxes. So I went to good old Google once again. So wax is used in products that makes the tangling easy, also smooths and flattens the cuticles on the surface, which adds shine and gloss to the hair. So that description sounds great, right? But it also kind of sounds pretty similar to the description of what silicone could do. But I don't know. I think I also probably have a couple products that have wax in it that I have never noticed any buildup from. One of them, super surprisingly, being the Diva Curl Set It Free Spray. If you look right here on the ingredients, it contains beeswax. Bro, what? All right, this is the most confusing part. How is the Diva Curl creator also gonna create products against her own rules? I don't know. Darling, I just don't get it. Not only is it in this product, this is one of my favorite Diva Curl products. This is my go-to like refreshing spray that I love to use all the time. I put it in my Diva Curl bundle. I think it works great. And I haven't had any buildup problems with it. 
But at the same time, if you watched my video last week, I just reviewed the Garnier Fertis Curl Treats products and both the butter and the smoothie contain beeswax as well. And with these products, I felt like a really weird like film on my hair and it left like a, a weird texture on my hand. I wasn't really a fan of these. So I don't know why I like the beeswax in this product, but didn't like it in this one. Let me check something out real fast. One thing to keep in mind is that when you read the ingredient list, the first things listed, that product has the most of those ingredients. And as you get down to the bottom, it's like in there, but like not really a lot. So according to the Garnier Fertis one, it's one, two, three, it's the fourth ingredient on this butter, okay? Or on the Diva Curl one, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like it's like the ninth ingredient. So there's definitely more wax in these products than the Diva Curl one. So maybe that's why I haven't really noticed a problem. So now that we've learned about alcohol and waxes, the last one that really threw me for a loop, which you guys brought to my attention, is the ingredient called C13-14 isoparaffin. And that is in the Not Your Mother's Curl Talk Cream, which I definitely love. So I was like, why are y'all tripping saying this isn't CG friendly? Like I don't see any page that talks about isoparaffin. But after doing more research, no thanks to the book, I just straight up Googled C1314 isoparaffin. And apparently this little ingredient helps seal in moisture and soften the hair. It acts as a lubricant to provide an increased slip between adjacent hair strands, makes the tangling easier, smoothens and flattens the cuticle on the surface, which also adds shine and gloss to hair. That all sounds great. I guess it's similar to a wax and it also can coat the hair. So once again, with my personal experience, every time I use this product, I have amazing, beautiful curls and I haven't experienced any product buildup. I say, if you try a product and it is making your hair dry and you notice that it has alcohol in it and your hair is really, really dry, stop using it. If you use a product that contains beeswax or isoparaffin and you're noticing a lot of buildup on your scalp and you don't feel like you're getting any moisture, stop using it. So I'm gonna tell you right now, I have not been checking for the alcohol or the isoparaffins or the waxes on my products. I have never committed 100% to the Curly Girl method. I'm sorry if I let you guys down. I'm sorry if I misled you. That was never my intent, but what I meant by saying that this product is sulfate, paraben, silicone free is that this product is sulfate, paraben, silicone free. That's all I meant. Anything else was your own assumption, darling. But I'm not mad at you, I'm not mad at you. We just had a little miscommunication there, but now everything is cleared up. But let me make one thing very clear. The CG method definitely works. I've seen a hundred million examples of girls that went from really damaged, dry, ugly, straggly curls to beautiful, bouncy, defined curls because they followed the CG method. And they at least were doing no sulfate, no paraben, no silicone. Anything else I think is like extra credit. If you want to go the extra, extra mile and make sure that you follow this little book completely, I don't think you have anything to lose. Like if anything, your hair is just going to look better than mine because I wasn't checking for those ingredients. Go for it. Do you, boo. I believe that the Curly Girl method should be a recommendation, a guideline, something that is suggested to give your curls the best results. There's a lot of stuff in here that I 100% agree with. Like it even has a section about gels and how it should create that hard cast to create perfect definition. And I was like, that's exactly why I use gels. It tells you how to get a curly haircut. I think it should be on dry curls and natural styles like the Diva Shawn salons. Everything in this book is positive information for your curls. If you follow this book 100%, you have nothing to lose. Like you will see results. Whew, that was a lot to cover, but I feel like it needed to be said. There needed to be more of an understanding. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to link a couple things in the description box. I will link a link to this book that is in my Amazon store. If you guys want to read it, it does have a lot of great curly hair information. If you know someone who is just starting their curly hair journey, maybe a mom that has mixed kids or curly hair that she doesn't know what to do with. If you're just brand new to the curly girl world, this is a great curly beginner starter book. If you have watched every curly hair video that I've made, you probably already know everything in this book. 
And I'm also going to link two videos that I show you how to shop for curly hair products and how to read the labels on the back of curly hair products that include full lists of all the sulfates and silicones to avoid. So what do you guys think? Did you learn a thing or two from this video? Have you actually been following the curly girl method this whole time? Did you break a couple rules on accident? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think and if you are going to continue to follow the CG method or why you're not. If you did find this video helpful or funny, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I post two new videos every week, once on Friday and once on Sunday. And make sure you follow me on Instagram at Ms. Bianca Renee. That way you guys get daily updates on what products I like and which ones have good ingredients, what I'm trying next, what my next video is gonna be on. All the sneak peek behind the scenes stuff you need to know is on my Instagram story. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching, Bianca Renee, today.